Hi Sagittarius, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your April 2022 tarot reading. This is a reading for all Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Thank you to all of you for all the support. I send you love and positive energy every single day. I truly appreciate all of you. And if you're new here, welcome to you. I post new readings on Friday, then again on Monday. So if reading doesn't resonate, come back in a couple of days. You can watch a new reading. Don't ever try to make it make sense. It's always someone's reading, not always everyone's. Fridays are a general reading. Mondays are a different style every week. So today's reading will be a more detailed Celtic cross style reading, but then next week it'll be something totally different. So if you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right, what advice do you have for Sagittarius? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. What does Sagittarius need to know, please? For the best and highest good of all concerned with Sagittarius. Messages for Sagittarius, please. Okay. All right, so we will start here with the tarot, and then we'll have the Angel Answers Oracle cards. Current situation, you've got the Ace of Swords. The immediate influence is the Six of Cups, and God dang it, I swear to God, Scorpio had that same card in that same position. Three of Swords in the subconscious, Five of Cups in the distant past, Queen of Cups in the more recent past. You've got the Two of Swords coming towards you, but you're represented by the Six of Swords, the person or situation you're attracting is the Two of Cups. I love it. You've got the Ten of Cups in your hopes and fears, the Magician in the outcome. Now, the bottom of the deck, we have the Lovers, the Four of Wands, and the King of Wands. So, I feel like you're going to be entering into a very empowered energy field here. You have here, well, let's see, two major arcana. You've got Gemini. You've got Air, Water. You've got a lot of Air and Water. Yeah, it's pretty much split except for these two um, fiery energies here. And I feel like they're telling you to be true to yourself. Be yourself, they keep saying. It's something about that because some of you too, you may find in your own energy, you, you may not prefer to have all that watery energy around you. And even with the swords that are here, the two and the six feature a lot of water in the card. So I keep feeling that they're telling you to stay true to yourself. The King of Wands has you full of life, charisma. I almost said charism. And that's a word that um, Carolyn Mace uses. And I never use it. So that must be important here. Um, but she does talk about that charism. And I want to say when she's she's spoken or lectured about it, it does have to do with your ability to care for others on a soul level, okay? So I won't get into that too much farther, but it must have come out for a reason. Well, anyway, with the King of Wands, you're definitely going to attract attention here. And it's it's with the Magician here too, it's like such an empowered kind of energy. You have somebody here that wants a commitment with you. So if you've been in something, if you've been in a breakup, I see reconciliation because you do have cards supporting it. But others of you too, if there's a choice, because you have a few different twos here, if there's a choice, you definitely have a strong relationship coming through. Now, with the Four of Wands, that's a card of law of attraction energy. It's great synchronicity, but it's a wedding. And so for some of you, again, in relationships, they're telling you you've got a love that changes your life and a wedding here. And those are very important energies. With the Four of Wands, so for those of you that it's reconciliation, whatever's been constricting it, whatever was in the past that was it just almost kept stifling the relationship if it was demands of family or work or something like that I do feel like you're moving beyond that and you're going to be able to be in that place where it's a love that grows that those other things you learn how to mitigate and manage so they don't interfere with a love that's really there but with that four of wands in terms of career too with the four of wands and lovers and we'll talk about the lovers and love that that's about a, a career move too that's expanding and growing so especially to those of you that are looking to go out on your own with something and to kind of work for yourself or do something new you've got a card you've got cards of expansion and growth and really taking some chances that turn into movement they turn into something good with the king of wands it's uh, the upwardly mobile of the tarot so in terms of a relationship with the lovers and even with work too 
It's being divinely guided. You're being protected. It is a card, though, where we want to stay close to source. It's Archangel Raphael. And you've got a sun in the card, which aren't there aren't very many. In fact, it's the only one here. It really is telling you that you're standing in the sunlight of the spirit. The lovers used to be called the choice, and it does represent choices, but it represents choices that are for the best. And you have choice here several times. So I feel like you're going to make a decision of the heart, and it's the right move for you, Sagittarius. They're telling you it's something that's going to flourish and grow and be mature in terms of love, but also in a career. It's like you're moving past any obstacles and moving forward in growth. So with the Six of Cups here, this is a card of sentimental longing, nostalgia, but it is definitely a card of reciprocity and doing very loving, kind, affectionate gestures. Some of you, it's a card of reconciliation, and it is telling you that whoever who you're, you're attached to here or attracted to Attached might even be a better word. They're trying to tell you that they don't stop thinking about you, that you're in their heart. Your energies are connected. And with that Ace of Swords, there's got to be a conversation to move things forward. It's also to a card of mental clarity. It's a card of initiations and beginnings as well. But it really does cut through the ego. That crown represents the ego. So things that have been holding it back that are more on that mundane level, I do feel like it moves forward. Now, for others of you, if it's a new relationship here, again, it's indicating that there's a lot of kindness in the relationship, appreciation, that desire to keep things fairly simple, not overcomplicate the relationship, and be very straightforward with that Ace of Swords. It's With, with the Ace of Swords, you just kind of cut through all the BS. You know, there's no game playing there. It's really knowing what you want and being completely honest and forthright. So... I do feel like you have a very honest relationship here and it's integrous too with that Ace of Swords in terms of communication with anything work related. Well, we've got the Three of Swords in the subconscious, which has its ups and downs. Now, the Three of Swords indicates acceptance of a situation that was very challenging. The key to it though in the subconscious position is we want us we want the subconscious to believe that you attract more than this. You're not here to keep repeating this lesson, okay? We don't want more of this. And if we don't learn from the lesson, the universe will keep sending the lesson in different pairs of pants, in different situations. So we want the subconscious to know that the lesson has been learned and you're here to have a robust, full, rich life. You're here to have a, a life that's full of joy and happiness and love. And so with this, again, some of you may be about doing some techniques. I've mentioned in the past, Lester Levinson, the Sedona method, NLP, all good for that subconscious training so that we can let go of things. Now in the distant past, you definitely had something painful. Again, some of you, it was a breakup with this five of cups. And the real key to this is not staying here because fives are about activity and change. And it's also kind of a means to an end. So for some of you, you had to have that ending, whether it was a relationship or a job, it had to happen because you called it forward. And I know that's hard to hear. And and some of you, it's about that three of swords in the subconscious and, and it's understanding our shadow aspects so that we can accept those, but on a better, on a greater level, manifest what we really want. And so there was definitely some disappointment but whenever you get this card, they're always trying to tell you to look at the two cups, look at the bridge to go home, focus your point of attraction on what you want, but also focus it on the things that you have here and available to you because you have you have lots of resources here. It's just a matter of seeing them. We get what we focus on, whether we want it or not. So with the queen of cups here, there's a heart mending now, the Queen of Cups is, Queens and Kings are masters of the suit. You have a, a definitely a very strong love relationship here. And with this Queen of Cups, it's a confidant. So some of you, again, if it was a breakup, it, you may still be connected because you got very close and you were very transparent with one another. And there was a maturity here. Okay, this is a very mature kind of love. It's an unconditional love where you can be yourself. And that may be why it's been hard to let go of it because you felt like, God, I've been exactly myself and I thought this was going forward. 
So with some of you though, it may be an indication of a new relationship showing up. And for those of you that it's something new, it's time to let go of the old, okay? With that two of swords, it's time to put down those heavy swords because this is gonna continue to grow. You have it multiple times in the reading that love grows here. Now, others of you with job relationships and job situations, this can be a new beginning in a job too, where you feel much more secure and like you can, it keeps coming in, just be yourself, they keep saying. So the two of swords energy, you're gonna have a turning point here. And it's very important to, to let go of these swords in this, you look at the scale of the swords. Whenever you see swords, that are an, at an angle that's always a difficulty or a challenge. The upright swords, like in the Ace of Swords, indicate something working out for you. And that's why we like to see it with the two and the three. By, by the way, they're right by each other too, which is another synchronicity here. So the two of swords, it's time to take off the blindfold, to see things for what they were, for what they are, and, and really honestly what they can be. And so the bottom sword represents fear and the top sword represents anger. And so we have to put those down. There's a new cycle coming here though, okay? So they're trying to tell you, you've got a new cycle and a partnership and it's time to let these go and let things flow. Let the energy get into alignment. Let you get into that synchronicity or into that in sync is even a better way to say it, in sync with what you're asking for. So I like the Six of Swords here because it shows once again that you've had a challenge down here when you see that wavy water, but you're going through into an area that's so much easier to navigate. You have two sixes here. And so actually you have three technically with the lovers. Um, but with these, it, they're telling you it's all about finding love and balance and harmony. We're not meant to be here to suffer, right? We can experience pain but we don't have to allow it to turn into suffering. And so it's time to move forward. When you have boats in the tarot too, it's an indication that your ships are coming in. So your time is now to move forward into a place that's gonna feel a lot easier to navigate and it's gonna feel like freedom. There's a freedom in here throughout the reading and the energy of celebration coming in. Well, the Two of Cups, this is a partnership and it's a partner for life. It's somebody who sees a future with you. And I don't care if you're broken up or not. I still feel like this person thinks of you often and maybe checks up on you a bit here or there. If it's a new relationship, though, again, it really is a true partnership. It's being able to be completely yourself. Let the swords down. You don't have to protect your heart. You don't have to guard yourself with this person. There's somebody here that really wants a commitment, and it's one that grows with the Two of Cups. And it is serious. You know, it's a card, too, that tells you that it's a relationship that's worth the investment. It's worth the love because there's real love here. And so we allow this to grow, and it's two-sided. There's reciprocity. You know, the cups are of equal size because you both want the commitment. It's not making anybody do anything. You know, when we look at this, too, as we go through it, with the Two of Cups, the Lovers, and then culminating into the Magician, you definitely have a Law of Attraction energy here. And it's really an important energy altogether collectively in terms of a relationship. It's something absolutely fabulous. So with the Ten of Cups, speaking of fabulous, they've got the Happy Family card here. So it's that rainbow after a storm. They're acknowledging here that you have been through something challenging, but you're coming out of that energy. Everyone here, they're dancing, they're celebrating. It is a card of reunions too. So again, you've got that multiple times. And for some of you, it may be about getting back together with your actual family and being able to be in that place where you're too, you're able to let your guard down. I just feel like somebody here has been guarded and it's time to shift out of that and relax a little bit and let this love flow in. It's a card of, you know, tens are about a new cycle. And so it's a card of perfection and brilliance and it's glowing it's that card of the energy that just glows all around you speaking of which now the magician the hermetic principle behind this is know thyself because when you know yourself you know the universe you are a master manifester in this energy so be aware of your feelings be very careful with this because i think of the 10 day or excuse me seven day mental diet by emmett fox and he talks about your feelings are really the secret and so he, he makes the analogy of your thoughts 
with powerful feelings are similar to like the ember from a fire. And if it blows off on your sleeve, if it's a negative thought and you brush it off quickly, it doesn't burn a hole. But if you let it sit there, it's going to burn a hole. And so it's like being very aware of that because you're manifesting, you're drawing something very powerful in. Now, for some of you in terms of work, it's a card where you're going to have leadership. Those of you that do want to start something on your own and something new, I do feel like it goes along and it may start quickly and continue that momentum because this is like bringing heaven to earth. It's really an energy of strong attraction and desires fulfilled. So let's see here, Sagittarius, what the angels have to say for you. Okay, what else does Sagittarius need to know, please? Messages for Sagittarius, please. Okay. All right, you have here, trust, trust the universe always hears you and wants to bring in your heart's desires. Remain positive because you have a beautiful outcome. And big happy changes are on the way. There's definitely an energetic shift from something that's been restrained to something that's very open. They say in the near future, and you've got a yes, you can have, do, or be anything, Sagittarius. I love you, and I'll be back again soon.